he'll cut off whoever's introducing him. All right, we can just skip that part, man. Like, I don't want to. I don't want this to turn into the. You know, we're not gonna turn it into that shit. Like he'll that, he'll just cut everything off, and it changes the tone. And when he said it, like, it was the first time. You know, you look at somebody and you can't tell if he's looking at you. Like he's looking dead at me, but I'm like, I don't know if he sees me. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'm just like not relevant enough for him, but he couldn't see me and I felt it. And I was just like, he just really believes what he's saying and he wants it to inspire me and it did. I guarded Kobe in the garden. I can't remember how much he had, but I knew I had multiple steals against him. Like I'm thinking about all these things in my head and I'm like, so geek. The fourth quarter start. Like I was having that out of body experience. Like, yes, see, like let me just, appreciate this is amazing. Right, we in the garden, they going crazy. I got my player editions on. I just stole that thing from Kobe. Like fourth quarter starts, <laughs> <laughs> and Kobe said you had a great game. Oh! <laughs> but I'm looking like bro. There's still another quarter. I'm look. I swear I looked at the clock. Like it's 12 minutes. What you talking about? <laughs> like what you? What was that? You know what I'm saying? Like, you ain't said nothing the whole game. I've been talking shit. I done stole the ball. I'm hyped as hell. It's Kobe Bryant. He ain't said not one word to me. You know, locked in. The man come down. You remember he came, shot fake, shot fake, threw it off the glass, caught it, threw it to the corner. I'm like, bro, what you on? <laughs> <laughs> like, bro, you been regular all game. <laughs> Get to the spot, shot fake. Spin, pivot over here, spin back on the foot, drop it. I'm like, bro, what's going on? Then he pulled up from like 35 feet on some Steph Curry shit before yep. Steph was doing that. <laughs> he pulled up and laced it. I'm like, they called a timeout. Dan Tony looking at me. I'm like, bro, I ain't. <laughs> the time playing with Kobe Bryant. As normal, I answered it honestly. My truth, you know, what my experiences were. And I said it was an overrated experience playing with Kobe Bryant. And now everybody who's who's a fan of Kobe's, including the interviewer, was like, hmm, explain, what do you mean by overrated experience? Because I have inside information, because I dealt with this man for two seasons and my, my locker was here, his locker was here for right two next seasons. To I watched this man put on his shoes every day <laughs> for work. I wasn't the 12th man on the bench. I wasn't the, the call up from the G League who was trying to just uh, fill a, a roster spot. I started with this man. Like we shared a cubicle. Side by side. How do you do that for two seasons and never hold the conversation? Never, what's up? Good morning. Do you need anything? Can can I get you a cup of coffee? You know, how's the family? Nothing. Two seasons, side by side. Yeah. And that's what I said. I shared a story about how I did try to talk to him. You know, I'm like, I'm the starting point guard with him in the backcourt. Let me just try to talk to him. And I, you know, said, did you catch, happen to catch the football game last night? And he looked at me, honestly, looked at me and said, you can't talk to me. You need more accolades under your belt before you come talk to me. He was dead serious. I'm not even gonna get to you know how that's disrespectful as a man. So that set the tone. Never spoke to him for, again or tried to for two years as the starting point guard. It was 2008. The Redeem team was formed, and we were in Vegas for the start of training camp, and we were getting ready for the Olympics in Beijing. We're going to head to Beijing, and I wanted to establish myself as a young leader on the team by waking up bright and early, day one. So the goal was to be the first one at breakfast. But when I get there, Kobe's already there with ice packs on his knees, drenched in sweat. Now, it took me a minute to figure it out, but this guy wasn't only awake before me. He had already worked out. He had just played in the finals days earlier. Meanwhile, I'd been off for months and I was still exhausted. What he had done that morning was incomprehensible to me. That dedication he had only days after falling short of an NBA championship. That taught me something I've never forgotten. Legends aren't defined by their successes. They're defined by how they bounce back from their failures. We got blew out at, uh, at Portland. And he came in the locker room and he was like, from now on out, every time down the court, I touched the ball. Y'all gonna learn what it's like to play with Kobe Bean fucking Bryant. <laughs> and I'm sitting there looking like, okay. oh, this motherfucker's serious. <laughs> dead ass. We go, we shower and shit, we come back. Nick walk in the locker room, talking about, y'all better throw that motherfucker the ball or it's gonna be some shit around here. Straight so, up. Like, Nick never took anything serious, though. Yeah. But we just got the shit kicked out of us and Kobe wasn't going for it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And so I just think mentally, like, he meant that shit. Right. You know what I'm saying? I just think at that point his body just didn't give him what he wanted. It's 